Very few had ever been on horseback, very few had ever even touched a horse and let alone had a desire to, but it's a mandatory requirement for anyone in my program. Every single player and every single recruit that we've considered for six years has been on horseback. I develop young people, that is my passion. I do it through what I consider elite level football, but the football is just the platform. The purpose is the development of amazing people that could contribute in so many ways to society and that means their own homes and it means their own families and it means their communities and it means they help make our nation and our communities better. Having grown up in the horse business, my dad was interested in cutting horses while I was growing up and it was a lifestyle that I learned I couldn't replicate without animals. So as I thought about raising my own sons, being a Power 5 football coach and raising other people's sons, it just didn't seem possible um, at the same level I was hopeful to accomplish without the use of uh, horses and space and those experiences. I see even in this room those already fiercely committed and can't wait to come and support and see how this goes and others are skeptical. I get it. I will outlast you. While I was standing in front of my team being announced as the head coach at the University of Virginia, the new head coach, there was a lot on my mind and a lot as I was looking at this new team through their body language that I was thinking this is going to need a significant building focus. There were some guiding principles that started to emerge right then that I'd never used before or never articulated out loud that were becoming really important instantly. And one was earned, not given, where they'd have to earn the chance to even get on the field or wear anything that had our symbol or colors on it. And, but the next thing uh, was, is they had to learn to do hard things. And I did all the starting of Colts for my dad. And so he would bring in any number per year. And the first ride was always mine. The first year was always mine. And then I'd pass them on to him. And he really wasn't concerned if they were gonna bite or kick or buck or anything else. The job was um, to start them. And I was looking and reflecting on that, having been bit and kicked on and stepped and thrown. And, and I was looking at my team saying, these kids need experiences like that. And like that meant on horseback and doing things they were fearful of maybe, they didn't really see any value in, but would end up yielding a development they probably couldn't have any other way. Holly found eight acres and we thought that was gonna be it. And we came down to the end of the road to turn around and it was like, what is this? And it was for sale. We didn't have the intent right from the beginning to have 30 acres. But when we saw this, our ideas became of what this could be for our whole program. It didn't look like this, but it was like, oh, this, we could do this. It's been worth it for sure. So are you good riding? I have very little experience with riding. It's okay, so um, our horses are great. Um, as long as you're willing, then we'll- Oh, I'm willing. We'll okay, great. So basically with the recruits, the same experience, right? That's kind of what they go through. Yeah. Most of the time they're not anxious to trot or lope, so you're already advanced. <laughs> These young players are told by the world that they're, man, so important because they can run fast and jump high and catch a ball and score touchdowns or tackle someone. I love this idea of, of earning and not giving anything. And a way to get into our program is you have to earn your way in. And that means by taking on new things. There's no growth that happens um, when you're comfortable. And so one of the best ways to drive that home is the minute they arrive here after their bags are in their hotel rooms is they're here on our property. The HB3, Holly Bronco and three boys would be our brand. And they're literally on horseback, not knowing which way to get on, front or back or sideways. And parents trying to coach their sons. And so I see family dynamics and it's amazing that the horses kind of grasp the whole idea of what's happening. And I kind of hear them, you know, and like roll their eyes. But in this compassionate way, they're partnering in the raising of people to do something they haven't done and caring for them, to, for them to become someone they haven't been. And so they see potential, as do I. And so all of a sudden, these young men who are big and strong are expressing humility and they're a little bit nervous uh, and they start listening and they're showing appreciation um, to not only the coach, but a, a live animal that's helping them. And within about a half hour going around the property on the 30 acres, they have become something they weren't before through the help of horses. Football was one platform. 
but that platform wasn't comprehensive enough. When I add agriculture to it, and being on the land and with animals, and you put that with Power 5 football, that becomes more comprehensive. When you add a world-class academic institution as well, that becomes more comprehensive. And so the number of blind spots left for the complete development of a young person, there really aren't many, and it's very intentional. My dad taught me to drive by throwing me the keys in fifth grade. He told me to go do the chores, and there was no instruction, but there was a really high expectation. We know in the world of developing people and teaching, high expectations are one of the greatest gifts we can give anyone. And my dad taught me that. What I do share with the, the players on our team and the recruits is this is what's going to happen, and it isn't optional. If you want to join our program, the most talked about event in our players' time at UVA or the recruits that choose us or do not choose us, um, they're talking about their time on horseback. You're gonna be a lot more, the horse is gonna be more confident than you are rather than looking this way and then trying to look up and down, it's a lot more reacted. So chest up a little bit more, yep. And, and you can let your, let your arm hang a little bit more straight down with your rein hand, there you go. There are moments that I'm paying attention to. And again, this is an amazing experience to build young people. But to be clear, I'm also forming an assessment of who is this person? What's the family dynamic? And are these people people I wanna be around? As I'm giving instructions to each player, are they looking at me or are they paying attention to other things that aren't as significant? Are their parents giving them instruction and the parents have never ridden over the instructions that I'm giving? And if that's happening, that's probably a red flag for this partnership. And then I'm looking at the way they get on after I've just instructed. And sometimes it's a foot in the stirrup and a sigh, and there's a pause. Other times it's a foot in the stirrup and they're just up and on and like, what's next? And sometimes it's a try to get up and then no, and they walk away and the family or I encourage them to come back. I'm more compelled by those that listen, put a foot in and swing up and say, what's next? I like the initial start and just who's listening, who's paying attention, and then how quickly do they follow and with what enthusiasm or intent. And then I'm watching the families to see what's their reaction to all this. And there are the, the parents where their eyes are big and their hands are over their mouth and they're holding hands. And I mean, this is a horse that's just standing almost like he's asleep. And then I usually move down toward the end of the arena and there are families that actually want to, they want to walk with us, but there's, you know, there's a fence on purpose. And I'm watching others that just smile at their, um, at their wives or husbands. They kind of nudge each other. There he goes. Yeah, this is going to be cool. Um, and when I go over the hill, the parents aren't here. So after we leave the arena, and I just open the gate and go. And so I'm with them about a half hour as we wander the property on horses, having conversation without their folks. And then I watch when we come back, are they the same when their folks are there and when they're not? And I like assessing that. And it becomes so clear whether we fit or not. So Rocket, he has a kind of a weepy eye. And so he loves, loves, loves just to kind of get all that goop each morning out of his eyes, which is another just cool act that connects us is, yeah, I bet that feels better. As I was being raised, yeah, you've got to get up early because the animals need to be fed. It's great to make sure that the stalls are clean because the flies then are eliminated or reduced and that's better for the animal. And it doesn't take long before you realize this isn't just about you or me, it's about caring for someone else. That transition ends up being really powerful for caring for a family. There are others depending on you. If you don't do your job, they're hungry. And if you're not looking at their feet and looking at their joints, who's gonna care for them? And so in this world of young people that uh, so many in the world of college sports are saying how great they are because of one small skill set, wait, what about the things that are lasting and substantial? As an introverted person who loves solitude, but I have an extroverted person's job where I'm in front of cameras all the time and the visibility and people having an opinion about what I do or what I say and all that, an hour on horseback is a lot more effective and healthy in terms of coping mechanisms of anything that I've ever imagined. And just being able to connect with another, man, live animal and honoring uh, my heritage, which is in the cowboy way and the pioneers that came all the way from the east to the west and without horses, none of that comes to fruition. So it's really cool for me to be able to honor and kind of relink with that 
I just apply it in a different way that maybe those that lived 100 years ago probably already understood. Good, get some kick, good, nice, yeah, woo-hoo. I have a pretty simple rule in my football program. I just won't add anyone I don't like. I think most people view love above like. So I believe in loving your neighbor. That's where it starts. That's different than when you have a free afternoon who you invite, which I kind of view as a different category. So I, uh, I won't allow anyone into our program at the professional level or player level that I don't like. Why would I do that with people I'm around with such long hours, with so much at stake? But what if I can't wait to see him every day? What if we're united in purpose? And what if we're anxious to see each other every day? That to me becomes an ideal family. That doesn't mean the same. That means lots of diversity, but a similar goal. And that then becomes so much fun. And so my hope is that every door in the office that I work, someone behind that door is amazing as a human being. Kind and compassionate and caring and trustworthy and honest and hardworking but I also expect them to be really good at what they do. And I found that those are the people I like, the ones that are really good at whatever they've chosen to do, not made to do, but chosen to do in this world, but they do it in a way that reflects a kind and compassionate and hardworking human spirit. And again, through space and agriculture and animals, I just haven't found a way to teach that um, as effectively without that. What I found is without the partnership of the animals, it's, it's not complete. All of the, the outside world in football is 12 minutes that way. And to be 12 minutes from that to this, I'm not sure you could have two bigger contrasts. Power five football and college life, I'd love to say there's free time. There's hardly any. Our players are invited. It's a standing invitation. And so on occasion, I get a text, hey, can I come back out? So I could really use a day at the HB3. And it's a place of renewal. Whether they're in the pool or whether they're fishing at the pond or whether they're on horseback, what their parents are assured is there's always a place and they can't ever call home and say there's nothing to do because we're 12 minutes away. And the ones that come, they're coming because they could use a day. And that alone, I think is a, is a worthwhile gift that they've understood something does renew them personally, and they're finding it in the outdoors, and they're finding it in space, they're finding it with animals. What I found is the connection between myself and others when they're allowed in is at a level and a depth that can't happen if they're not allowed in. Because this is my private space and I am introverted. And under pressure, I go off the scale that way. And this, this idea of allowing others to come into our space that wasn't taken lightly. And on any given day, sometimes still is begrudgingly. And so I think there's power in that for any of us is by making ourselves vulnerable, by opening ourselves up and taking risk. And there is risk to let others come in. Is it worth it? And that answer to start was, I don't know. That answer now is absolutely. What I've learned is I love just seeing who a person really is. Um, not the outside, but the inside. And I'm so thankful to the partnership I have with our horses. They let me see it. And they let me see it faster in a way that I normally couldn't, uh, just by them allowing us to be with them. And what I've learned is being less judgmental is a cool way to live. And there's lots of differences we can find about anyone. And there's lots of sides we can pick based on those differences. And I just don't find it nearly as fulfilling. And I like looking for the value uh, and everyone. I listen a lot more now. I'm more patient, I'm more understanding, and the animals have, have helped me understand that because um, they are, and, and they don't know who's getting on. I, I certainly think they know their ability level. I've, I've come to know that, but uh, they don't recognize faith and they don't recognize race, and they don't recognize geography, they don't recognize clothing or style, and they don't recognize things that I think we spend a lot of time in. They're sensing who a person is by how they're being treated. And I love that approach.